So many of you have been messaging me asking me to do a video profiling Quinton Biche as a perfumer, doing a list of fragrances that he's created. And I've been replying back to everyone as much as I can, letting you know that I do have a video on the channel currently that I shot two plus years ago, a top 15 list of Quinton Biche fragrances. But you know what? Since he does so many fragrances and there's been so many releases since I did that video, I thought I'd put together another video profiling his fragrances, but focusing on fragrances going back five, six years. So if you're interested in learning about Quinton Biche fragrances, a top 20 list of his fragrances going back five, six years, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. We're talking about Quinton Biche today. Are you a fan of this perfumer? I must say he is a busy man. He creates so many fragrances. So many different fragrances pop up with his name on it, with his signature. I mean, I, I'm, I'm impressed at how much the guy can produce. And he's pretty popular as well. And he's created some really, really amazing fragrances. I've got a top 20 list here. We're focusing on unisex and uh, uh, masculine fragrances, male targeted releases. And I've got a bonus section of feminine releases as well that I'm going to talk to you about today. Again, it's a top 20 list and we're going back five, six years. So mostly the last, you know, post, uh, I should say pre-pandemic and post-pandemic releases. And we're going to go ahead and get started with the first fragrance going to the house of, this is um, Maison Crivelli. I lost my train of thought there. This is Hibiscus Mahajad. You're probably wondering why this is ranked so low. So it isn't one of my favorite fragrances, but I can tolerate this one. There are fragrances that I've left off completely from the list, even though I've got way more than what's featured here. This one is just not one of my favorites from this house. I know it's got a lot of fans. I also think that this is kind of a variation on his very popular Delina fragrance that was launched in 2016 or 2015. But this is hibiscus with rose, vanilla, cassis, leather, mint, ambrette, and cinnamon. I, I like it. I just don't love it. It's just, just not one of the fragrances that calls me and says, hey, wear me kind of a thing. But I don't understand why there are so many fans of this one. If you're a fan of hibiscus Mahajad, do let me know what it is that you like about it. In this collection from Maison Crivelli, and I believe uh, Quinton Biche has made three fragrances in the extracts. My favorite is Patchouli Magnetic, which a lot of people don't seem to like. That is ranked pretty high. We'll get to it. But at number 20, it's Hibiscus Mahajad. So next is probably going to be another shocking, uh, you know, fragrance for you guys. I'm ranking Ensalade here at number 19. This is from the house of Marc Antoine Barrois. But there's four fragrances from this house here in this video. And you're going to find out where each one ends up. This, to me, I feel like it's not one of the greatest from this house, although it might have some fans and it has some people that don't enjoy this as well. I like it. I don't hate it as much as Hibiscus Mahajad. I can actually wear Ensalade, but the other fragrances that are on the list are more enjoyable for me. This is Rhubarb with Vetiver, Atlas Cedar, Tonka Beans, Australian Sandalwood. I feel like it is definitely the Quinton Biche signature and it does fit the Marc Antoine Barrois collection of fragrances. Just I feel like it's a distant, uh, you know, fragrance from all the other great releases from Marc Antoine Barrois. You know, it's wearable, as I said. This is Ensalade from the house of Marc Antoine Barrois. I do also have to say that is a bit leathery. There's definitely a leathery and smokiness with that one. But moving on to the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier, this is Le Mail Le Parfum. So recently I did a video on Elixir, Le Mail Elixir, which will be coming up soon. But I've put Le Mail Le Parfum here. Uh, and it is uh, pretty good, actually. It's definitely better than the original, although the original has gotten, you know, reformulations and the butchering and everything. This version is quite good. And then up until I smelled uh, the Elixir version, uh, I felt like this was great. They've actually intensified the fragrance and, you know, made it very, very spicy. But when you compare this version, the Le Parfum, which apparently it's not even a Parfum concentration, it's an Eau de Parfum concentration, they have uh, boosted up the spices and intensified it with kind of aromatic notes as well, which the original is vanilla and lavender. Here we have, you know, like loads of cardamom as well, which is quite delicious. Le Mail Le Parfum at number 18 from the house of uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier. This next one is um, from the house of uh, Penhaligans. It's a Terrible Teddy. Are you guys fans of this one? So yeah, this is a 
Quinton Biche created fragrance. It's actually very, very leathery is what I should say. It's definitely got lots of ambroxan, leather, and incense. It's definitely got loads of musk in here as well. It has kind of ambery touches. And then, of course, it dry. It's a very, very dry fragrance with some smoky elements with the leather as well. I think the fragrance is perfectly captured profiling this animal, the rhinoceros, because uh, I get very leathery. Whenever I look at the skin of the the rhinoceros it has a very leathery uh, presence to it so perfectly you know uh, meshing of styles of fragrances with the animal uh, this is the portraits collection from Penhaligons and definitely pretty rough leathery smoky ambery musky fragrance from uh, Penhaligons terrible teddy so the next fragrance we're talking about going to the house of l'artisan perfumer this is eerie degree just brand spanking new from this house and uh, this collection is the vegetable collection. I think it's called Le Potager from uh, the this house, L'Artisan Parfumer. And I believe Quintan Biche has done three fragrances for this collection. Two of them are here. One of them is not. Uh, I didn't like the sound of it, and I've smelled it, and I enjoyed the two that are in this video. This is very powdery iris, but it also has green peas. If you like the idea of a green peas smell, the way it smells, very green. I really enjoy the smell because my dad used to grow them, and you could smell them off the vines, uh, You know, especially when you open them up with uh, the little the peas inside, uh, kind of like the bean-shaped uh, you know, vegetable or whatever it's called. But the smell is really prominent with that and it's definitely captured here in this fragrance. So it's basically just iris, peas, the green peas, and then also some bergamot. So it has some citrusy touches. But it's definitely very, very powdery and I feel like iris and the peas really do go hand in hand. So definitely adds this kind of a green and uh, vegetal quality against the iris. And iris to me has a bit of vegetal quality as well. It also has some creamy undertones when they're using the orris butter. But it's quite nice. It's a nice fragrance ranked here at number 16 this is eerie this is uh eerie degree from the house of pen not penhaligans it's l'artisan parfumer but penhaligans and l'artisan are definitely companies uh under the same conglomerate but moving on to a fragrance from the house of legalion this is tilleul i think that's how you pronounce it in french meaning uh linden blossom there we go not really having a good time focusing this there we go so Le Galeon is a great underrated house that really didn't find an audience here in the States or any retailers. I don't see the fragrances selling here anywhere, but they did do some great fragrances. In fact, it was an older house that was shelved and then it was brought back uh, from uh, this person that basically took over the house. And they launched kind of classical style fragrances and perhaps some of the retailers that... Um, had uh, you know inspected these fragrances they thought maybe they were just too classic to carry most people want modern fragrances but i feel like they have some great fragrances and this fragrance even though it has classic touches definitely has modernity or modernity as well created by quintan biche all of these are created by quintan biche it has a linden accord with honey there's ambroxan and musk so basically it's a sweet floral fragrance kind of a yellow white floral note of linden blossom and it's definitely capturing this flower and beautifully meshing with the honey for me the flower itself has honeyed undertones so it's given that quintan biche would blend it with honey because it brings out more honey from the flower here but of course musks and ambroxan and Ambroxan to kind of extend the life of the fragrance. But this is Tilul from the House of Legalian. This is at number 15. And then the next L'Artisan Parfumer Le Potager fragrance or the Vegetable Collection fragrances. This is Vetiver et Carla, this one right here. So this one's really, really good. It's a great combination of vetiver with tomato leaves. But for me, when I smell this one, I also get the, the fruit of the tomato fruit itself, not just the vines because leaves have that kind of viney green smell. But for me, this is also a bit succulent with how the tomatoes are and it's quite delicious. It's a great meshing of the tomato leaves with the tomato fruits against the kind of dry, grassy, earthy vetiver and then throwing in some uh, citruses as well, like grapefruit. Grapefruit and vetiver together are a match made in heaven uh, i've heard from perfumers that grapefruit grape not grapefruit but vetiver has grapefruity undertones so it's a given that they always combine grapefruit with vetiver but this is delicious if you haven't tried it it's vetiver at carlat try it I think you're going to like it. Up next, going to a fairly small or unknown house. This is Rubes Milano with Blue. This one right here. 
This is another leather fragrance, kind of sort of similar to Penhaligon's uh, Terrible Teddy, but this is quite more animalic here, and uh, definitely they have added animalic notes to, you know, make the fragrance a very leathery animalic fragrance. But in the end, it's powdery. It's got leather, there's iris, there's woodsy notes, animalic notes, there's some flowers, there's some citruses, and of course, some aromatic notes. Really gorgeous bottle as well. This is a kind of a luxury house with beautiful, beautiful fragrances. And this one, definitely a very animalic leather fragrance. If you like the idea of animalics in uh, leather fragrances, definitely check this one out. And I think uh, Quinton has done a great uh job with the creating this fragrance and putting it in some beautiful luxurious blue bottle this next fragrance is going to the house of essential parfums not necessarily luxury it also inexpensive fragrances under a hundred dollars i should say not in, not very inexpensive but uh, definitely niche quality under 100 this is from the house of essential parfums this is Boise imperial this one right here so this to, to me does smell like a cross between ganymede and uh, b683 from the house of marc antoine barois and uh, quintam biche has basically created something copying his own work for a more budget house this features notes of thai basil timut pepper haitian vetiver georgie wood which is cedar wood patalia akigala wood indian patchouli and ambro fix akigala wood will keep coming up quintam biche does use akigala wood quite a bit to me akigala Gala wood smells a bit like a cleaned up patchouli and I can see that it's uh, definitely here for me. It's not identical but kind of like taking those two fragrances from MAB and combining them and adding some other things. So you'll be reminded of uh, Ganymede and you'll be reminded of B683 but this is its own thing. Boise Imperial from the House of Essential Parfums. That is at number 12 and then moving on to the House of Jean-Paul Gaultier once again. This is Le Mail Elixir. This one right here. I really 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 do love this fragrance really do it's a great quality fragrance in fact it is much better than the la parfum for me this is a sugary very very intense butterscotchy sugary fragrance in the original style intensified with loads of vanilla they've sweetened it up dried it up and then also added aromatics but for me it's more about the tonka vanilla and the kind of gourmandy elements versus the kind of aromatics that are prominent in the fragrances from the male collection so tonka beans mint lavender benzoin vanilla so the mint is definitely there too. But for me, I don't get as much mint as much as lavender. But actually, I should say it's more of a balance of the mint and the, the lavender here. But definitely very syrupy, sticky, sweet. And I actually really like it as a solid, solid designer fragrance from the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier. It's Le Mail Elixir. Next, we're going to the house of Dries Van Noten. This is Sur Ma Po. This one right here. A brand new fragrance in my collection. And... Two colognes in this collection that I really enjoy, with Sur Ma Po being my favorite of the two. Absolutely love it. It's an eau de cologne style, so that's why it's a large bottle. It only comes in one size, but it smells super fantastic on me. It's not necessarily uber intense, but I love the way it smells. And totally, totally signature Quintam Beach fragrance here. We've got vetiver with vanilla. There's orange blossom, tonka, bergamot, mandarin. Really, really delicious. And I feel like the fragrance does have some spices in there and totally reminder of the spices that he uses in fragrances uh, for Mar Marc Antoine Barrois. Definitely solid. If you like the idea of uh, the, the signature style of Quintan Biche fragrances, going into a vetiver citrusy direction and some light vanillic touches and spices, definitely check this, uh, this one out, especially if you're into lighter you know, performing fragrances, not necessarily thick, dense, heavy. This is a great scent. I really love it. That's why I had to buy it. This is Dries Van Noten Sur Ma Po, one of the better fragrances from this collection. Then we're going to the house of um, Marc Antoine Barrois. This is Ganymede Extra. Yeah, Ganymede Extra is kind of on the bottom because uh, I like the original a lot. And now I think. If you want the more intense version of Ganymede, the X-Rate is going to be perfect for you. But if you like the ethereal quality, the airiness of the original, it is super amazing. But either way, it's still very much smelling like the original, just intensified with Everlasting Flower, which is the Immortel. There's incense here, Myrrh Note, Saffron, which is Saffron. The Akigala Wood comes in with Mandarin. It's a great fragrance, don't get me wrong. It's just ranked a little low because... I really, really love the original. This one doesn't live up to uh, the original. It kind of falls flat a little bit, especially when you have B683 to compare to its x -rate. And I absolutely love B683 x -rate. This one is not as intense as the B683 uh, in 
X-Trade is what I should say. So this is Ganymede X-Trade at number nine. And then we've got Comte des Garçons Marseille. I've been speaking a lot about this one recently. Marseille is so, so good, guys. Inspired by the soap uh, industry in Marseille. It smells like soap, basically. It's powdery, it's clean, it's citrusy, citrus floral, and just fragrance that smells super delicious. Perfect to wear when you want to smell clean and soapy and just delicious because it's, it's lots of citrus flowers like neroli. There's musk here. There's cosmone, petalia, orange blossom. There's woodsy notes and amber. It does have a good dry down it is an eau de toilette with great lingering power and i like that about it so this is marseille from the house of comme des garçons that is at number eight let me know if you are a fan of that fragrance and speaking of neroli and orange blossom we're going to the house of van cleef and arpel this is neroli amara this one right here and even though this is neroli orange blossom focused i feel like it does have a, a, a little reminder of something like uh, ex nihilo's uh, Fleur Narcotique, but it's different. It's more like amplifying the neroli and orange blossom in here, adding some white musk in the notes, along with some fruitiness. I think there's a pear note in here, but lots of citruses as well. It's quite delicious. If you're a fan of Fleur Narcotique, definitely try neroli amara. Might find an, a kind of an alternative to uh, Fleur Narcotique, which is very, very popular. But I really, really enjoy neroli amara, one of the best from that house. Then moving on to the house of L'Artisan Parfumer once again. This is Mandarina Corsica, this one right here. So I recently featured this fragrance in a Citrusy Gourmands video. It is definitely a really delicious Citrusy Gourmand with loads of mandarin orange along with caramel. There's Immortel for kind of a, you know, brown sugary caramelly presence here with tonka beans, vanilla, bitter orange, cinnamon, sandalwood, maltol, and orange blossom. It's super, super delicious. Really a great fragrance that Quintan Biche has created. Very, very underrated as well. And if I ever want something that smells like mandarin orange because the mandarin orange is very, very realistic in this along with gourmand notes and sticky kind of caramelly notes definitely try mandarina corsica from this house it's a super delicious fragrance guys if you don't know this one please do check it out i recommend that one quite a bit and i really really love it because it's just really really great citrusy gourmand but it's not like super gourmand dish but definitely with the fact that it has those gourmand notes definitely falls into that category then we're moving on to the house of maison crevelli once again it's patchouli magnetic yes i've ranked this one pretty high not only does it smell great to me not only does a super intense beast mode very very long lasting it does garner me compliments as well i've never received compliments from hibiscus mahajat i don't wear it that much anyway but this one is super super amazing i love it because i love patchouli and this is kind of a tropical patchouli with a kind of milky lactonic quality with some white flowers and fr frangipani it's got gardenia and it also has frangipani and along with peach vanilla leather and of course the patchouli and sandalwood very very creamy it's very hot humid and tropical when you wear it and great great lingering power super intense so patchouli magnetic from the house of maison crevelli check it out if you don't know that one then going to the house of amouage it's guidance yes guidance is ranked pretty high i really really love guidance I like that it has rose. It also has a milky characteristic and also kind of the signature kind of minerally touches that Quintan Biche is known for. But then this is an amouage fragrance and it's super, super de delicious the way it smells. Guidance came out early this year featuring Cystus Labinum, Sandalwood, Akigala Wood, Ambergris, Vanilla, Osmanthus, Saffron, Rose, Jasmine, Frankincense, Hazelnut. Yeah, it does have a bit of light hazelnutty nuttiness, but I love the way this smells. This is one of the better fragrances that he's created for Amouage. There was two. I be, I can't remember what the other one was called. I didn't really care for it. It was very cold and incense -y. This one has warmth and the fact that it's got this kind of creamy undertone, kind of a lactonic milky undertone, it makes for a very cozy wear. So Guidance from the House of Amouage, super, super delicious. Then we're going to the House of Marc-Antoine Barrois. Once again, we've got one more after uh, this fragrance. This is B683 Extract. This one right here. Um, B683 X-Trade in comparison to Ganymede X-Trade is so different. This B683 X-Trade is super beast mode, really, really intense and also animalic. They've given it an animalic treatment. Ganymede was intensified in comparison to the original, but still it's not as intense as this. Really, really love it. And I didn't really care for B683 originally. I liked it. This one I really, really love. It's loads of rhubarb with vetiver, atlas cedar, tonka beans, and sandalwood. And it is super amazing. Really love the way this smells. It does have a bit of leathery touch in there as well. And it wears really, really beautifully. This is B683 Extrait. 
uh, wonderful fragrance. If you don't know this one, do check it out. I highly recommend it. This next fragrance is from the house of Italibra Orange. This is Experimentum Crucis, this one right here. Anybody know this one? This was a late discovery for me, and I'm absolutely in love with it. It's definitely the signature style of Quintan Biche, and it's got rose in it this time. Well, Guidance had rose in it as well, and it has its, you know, unique kind of signature notes, like Akigala wood is in here for sure, patchouli is in here, cumin is in here, and the whole, you know, concoction is really, really amazing to wear and very, very long-lasting. So Akigala wood with rose, patchouli, there's musk, cumin, there's a bit of fruitiness with apples and lychee fruit, honey and jasmine. It's smells great. It's like a different take on something like Ganymede. If you like Ganymede, definitely try this one out. But you got to like the other notes that I already mentioned, like rose and honey and things like that. But it's a great scent. Really, really wonderful. Great magical fragrance here. Experimentum Crucis from the house of uh, Italibra Orange. Wonderful offering. And then, of course, my number one favorite from uh, creation from Quintan Biche is uh, Ganymede. I mean, this is a really, really great fragrance, kind of on the level of Baccarat Rouge, very sexy, very musky, but also has that ethereal quality. It's leathery with violet leaves. There's mandarin orange, saffron, osmanthus, and a kigala wood, that special magical ingredient that is available at Givaudan that uh, Quintan Biche uses. If, I, if you don't know this fragrance, you should definitely check it out. I think it's just really loved. It's universally loved. So many people fall in love with this one. I don't know what it is about it. I know there's probably haters as well, but I think it's mostly positive. Anyway, Ganymede is number one really awesome fragrance from uh, the house of Marc Antoine Barrois created by Quintum Biche. Let me know your thoughts on these fragrances. Uh, again, I don't have every single fragrance to talk about. These are what I have, and I've also left off some fragrances that Quintum Biche has created because I can't fit them all in one video. But what's missing out there? Do let me know. Put a comment down below so I can find out. Before I go also, just to let you know, we are doing so much better with kit number six from Scent Club. This is Scent Club's kit number six. We have launched it and you guys seem to really be lying, liking this kit more than kit number five. So we still have kit number six and of course we have some more uh, kit number uh, five left as well. But let me know, tell you a little bit about the fragrances in this kit. We've got Bombay Bling by Nila Vermeer Creations. I can get that focused. We have um, Callus Subtle from the house of uh, Orens Parfums, that's this one right here. And then we have Porthole from the House of Lumari, all featured in kit number six. A great collection of summery fragrances. Get yours now before we run out. And as I said, kit number six is doing so much better. People seem to like this one over kit number five. I don't know what it is, or maybe kit number five launched at a bad time. I don't know, but either way, both of those are still available. They're linked in the info box and you can get them now. Either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Okay, as promised, we do have a mention of several fragrances created by Quintan Biche for the ladies. Uh, we've got Montclair Pour Femme, which was very, very powdery. I've left these off as bonus options. We have Mugler's Angel Nova. I feel like this is kind of in that same DNA as something like Dalina. Dalina is a very popular fragrance, so he makes a lot of fragrances smelling like Dalina. Of course, Carolina Herrera is a very, very good girl. Also reminds me of Dalina. And then YSL has Blouse, which also also reminds me of Delina. So it's kind of like that rosy, fruity, kind of musky fragrance that is, you know, kind of uh, in a lot of different fragrances. Then we have flankers to Delina, which were the Delina Exclusive and Delina La Rose. Those came out as well during this time frame of six years ago till now. And then last but not least, there was Parfums de Marley's Valaya. To me, it was kind of like a musky take on Fleur Narcotique from uh, Ex Nihilo. Anyway, those are just mentions of some uh, feminine offerings that uh, Quintan Biche has created. I don't buy a lot of feminine fragrances. That's why I left these off as bonus options. If you're a fan of these fragrances, do let me know. Put a comment down so I can find out. Have you compared Delina to YSL Blouse to A Very Good Girl by Carolina Herrera? Do you, have, do you see the similarities? Do let me know. And if you are interested in watching a video of... Um, 
Delina Alternatives, I do have a video on the channel. You can just search for Delina Alternatives and it'll bring up that video. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for another video tomorrow. I've got a new house introduction tomorrow. Uh, we're going to find out what it is coming right up tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.